Does everybody in Maine eat lobster? Does everybody in Maine have a funny accent? And is everyone in Maine sick of the tourists? We're going to answer those questions and more. So grab your snowshoes and your duck boots. We're going to unbox the state of Maine. Wow, we're out here in no man's land. We could be anywhere. But of course, we know we're in Maine because that's what this video is about. There aren't a lot of people in these parts. Maine's the only state in the nation with just one border. The state shares a long border with New Hampshire, but that's it. It's actually a much bigger state than you might think. You can fit all of the other New England states into Maine. New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. Maine has the lowest population density of any state east of the Mississippi. There's a million people here, but most people are far south of where we are right now. But more on that later. To get a complete understanding of Maine, we need to look at it from a higher level and then explore each region. This is Maine. As you can see, there are large areas in the northern part of Maine where things are vast and wide open. And then closer to the coast and to the south, there's a lot more going on. But for the people in northern Maine, they got everything they need. Thank you very much. We'll begin over here in the northwest part of Maine. Way up here is really nothing outside of Moosehead Lake and its woods and a lot of rundown cabins. No, that's mean. There are some teeny little tiny little villages with a smattering of folks tucked out way back here in the tracks of forest. Places that are just about as rural as you'll find in almost anywhere in the whole country. Maine claims to have more woods than any other state. 89% of the state is woods. That's probably why it got the nickname the Pine Tree State. You could drive back here for three or four hours and hardly see a soul. That's also why a majority of people in Maine drive trucks and SUVs and Subarus. Most of this region is made up of Piscataquis County, which is losing more people than any other county in the state. This county lost 6% of its population over the last decade. Why? Mostly an aging population, more deaths and births, and a loss of net migration. In fact, Maine now has the oldest average population of any state in the country. There's plenty of places to ski on this side of the state. In the middle of this vast region is Mount Katahdin. While New Hampshire's Mount Washington might be called the beast of the east, Mount Katahdin is the largest independent mountain with the most rugged terrain in the northeast. Crazy people trek up here and cross-country ski. It's also where the Appalachian Trail begins, or ends, depending on which way you're going. Down here in Somerset and Franklin counties, it's more woods and skiing. Logging's a big deal in Maine. A long time ago, like before we were a nation, timber from Maine's woods was used to make English ships. Today, lumber is an even bigger deal. Wood products make up 10% of Maine's exports, but the logging and wood industry in general is under threat here in Maine. Not because they're out of trees, but because they're out of lumberjacks. It's hard to find loggers and log drivers these days. They don't want to do the work, especially when they can earn higher wages in nearby states. Areas of interest in this part of the state include Rangeley, a smallish, townish, village-ish place along Rangeley Lake. Here, people's summer cabins are bigger than your actual home. Also out this way is Lewiston, Maine's designated punching bag. Lewiston is where they make Orloff vodka and whoopie pies. Nearby is the Oxford Hills Casino. This casino is out in the middle of nowhere, so it doesn't bring in any out-of-staters. It just sucks money away from the locals. Oxford Casino is wicked good fun. Up here in Aroostook County, it's also rural, but there's a little bit more going on. Like anything is better than nothing, right? This is the largest county east of the Mississippi, Aroostook County is. Mainers simply call this place the county. It's the crown jewel of everything that is old school Maine. And two things grow really well here, pot and potatoes. Now they don't have to grow marijuana in hidden plots way out in the sticks anymore because weed is legal in Maine now. And boy do Mainers take advantage of that. There's nothing wrong with potatoes though. Maine produces more than 60,000 acres of potatoes and 90% of those acres are up here in the county. In case you're counting, Half of all Maine potatoes are used for french fries, and 20% are used for potato chips. I'm glad ruffles have ridges, but mostly ruffles have flavor. Places of interest way up here in this part of the state are Presque Isle, a cute little place with 10,000 people and a couple of small colleges and a mall, but you're 170 miles away from an actual real city. And there's also Limestone, which has the Maine School of Math and Sciences. It's a bunch of nerds with seasonal affective disorder. But for the most part, about half of Maine is really just isolated. Where grandkids spend summer days eating cucumber and cream cheese sandwiches while grandma and grandpa watch Channel 6 and play cribbage. They have thick accents up here. 
What do most people do for entertainment way out here? Many haven't actually been spotted in the outside world for years, so we can't ask them. But there's a reason homes way out here have huge garages. In fact, often, the garage is bigger than the house. They need somewhere to park their snowmobiles and fishing boats and canoes and kayaks and ATVs. You'll probably even see Mainers way up here taking their riding lawnmowers to the store for duct tape, WD-40, and some coffee brandy. Now, while the rural parts of western and northern Maine might be considered hunters and woodsmen, the east side of the state is more fishermen and sailors. This is where Mainers call down east. A lot of people make their living as lobster fishermen, clam diggers, or seafood distributors. There's a teeny cute little place with 1,100 people and a lighthouse called Lubeck, located at the far eastern tip of the state. This is actually the first place in the country where you can watch the sunrise. As such, people flock here to do just that. This is also where they have a lot of blueberries, people. Up here near Jonesboro, Maine claims to grow almost 100% of all wild blueberries in the country. Most of the rest of this area is set aside for public land, and there are really pretty remote beaches. Now we move to central Maine, and that's where you're going to find a majority of what people in Maine bluntly call redneck trailer trash. This is where the stereotypical poor folks live. While Maine doesn't have any traditionally large ghetto tracks, it does have very poor communities and trailer parks. There's a lot of welfare here. You can go from a beautiful coastal town to a sad trailer park in 20 minutes if you take the right road. Of course, pot's legal here now, but you have hard drugs like heroin and fentanyl, which have taken hold of the poorer towns in central Maine. While a lot of people in central Maine struggle with poverty and drug use, there's a lot of hard workers that struggle to put food on the table. Parts of central and northern Maine are why many refer to Maine as the deep south of the north. Union, Maine is in this general area. That's where the inventor of moxie grew up. Mainers love them some moxie, but a lot of people think it tastes terrible. It gets its flavor from some root that's supposedly medicinal. And if a central Mainer ain't drinking moxie, he's taking oxy. Augusta's in central Maine. That's the state capital. It's relatively uninspiring. Not as boring as Montpelier, Vermont, but it's up there. Benga is up here too. This is also sort of a boring, quiet place with a lot of poverty. This is where Stephen King lives, so you can imagine what the people are like there. He based many of his books on small Maine towns. Just a piece north of Benga is Arono, where the University of Maine is. On the last Wednesday of spring semester, they close campus here so the kids can volunteer. They just drink instead. Guns are a big deal in this part of the state, as is hunting. Maine is the whitest state of all where 97% of the population is some shade of Caucasian. The other 3% is in Portland. In these areas we've discussed so far, it's mostly conservative folks, but the state is varied in its political leanings. Maine's a solid mix of Democrats, rednecks, and even Democratic rednecks. It's very red in some parts and very blue in others. Like along the coast and in Southern Maine, where two thirds of the population is. Maine has just about more coastline than any other state, even California. This is where all the diversity and the Democrats are. The accents aren't as thick here, nor are the bellies. They don't hunt shit. While northern Maine is rural and has a simple life, this is where the wealthier folks are who live in bigger homes. Southern Maine is kinda barely Maine anymore, and is less Maine the further south you get. Some call southern Maine Massachusetts light. Up here, which Maine calls mid-coast, is Mount Desert Island, or MDI. This is home to Acadia National Park and Bahaba. Katy is beautiful. It has hiking and carriage roads all on the coast. It's one of the top 10 most visited national parks in the U.S., everyone. Bahaba is a cute little town that's so popular, cruise ships come here. Sometimes there's so many tourists here in the summer, it seems like the whole island's going to sink. But tourism brings in about 20% of the state's GDP, and tourism's a big part of how Mainers run their living, so they have to deal with it. There's a bunch of other islands off the coast that are sparsely inhabited. Maine actually has more than 3,000 islands. Most of them are teeny tiny. Further down the coast are more small, cute towns along the waterfront, places like Booth Bay and Bath. Brunswick is home to Bowdoin College, and therefore is filled with snobs, hippies, and hobos. South of that is Freeport. L.L. Bean is located here. It's named after its founder, Leon Leonwood Bean. Yeah, that's his name. They make comfy clothes, and their boots are loved by the ladies. You get your sweetheart a new pair of duck boots out of the tree, and she's like, Hey, uh... Just outside of Freeport's a unique feature in Maine, a little 40-acre desert. It's called the Desert of Maine. Camels live here. Then we come to Portland. Portland's the most happening place around. Portland has a bunch of breweries and great restaurants. In fact, Portland has more breweries per capita in the nation. It's also been called the best food city in the country many times in the past. 
mostly because of the seafood. More on that later. But more and more folks are moving to Portland as it's viewed as a safe city away from all the drama that comes with living in a big city. I mean, there's only 50,000 people here. And with working from home a long-term reality for many, job opportunities aren't a driving force in bringing younger people into Portland. Five miles south of Portland is Cape Elizabeth, where like half of the pictures in this state are taken. A lighthouse here is the most photographed lighthouse in the country. It's actually one of 65 lighthouses in this state. That has to be a record. There's a lot of mansions and rural farms here along with wannabe artists. Nearby Scarborough also has some great beaches, but it's not all peaches and cream along the main coast. Just south of Portland is Old Orchard Beach or Old Orchard. It's kind of like a lower end New Jersey shore with a little bit less attitude. There's too many tourists here in the summer. It's run down and dirty. Not a bright spot on the main coast for sure, but the pier fries are good. And then you have Biddeford, which is druggy central. Further down the coast are posh coastal communities like Kinnebunk and Kinnebunkport, or the Kinnebunks. This is where the wealthy families vacation and where former presidents own second homes. Good for you, Kinnebunks. Way down here in York County are more places which serve as second homes for wealthy New England elites. This is also the fastest growing area in the whole state. Some people in Maine say they dislike the influx of Massachusetts folks. Others don't seem to mind, or they say they don't mind. But there's no denying that the far south part of Maine is becoming more crowded with more traffic and more crime. The natives along the coast are getting squeezed out by out-of-staters buying up oceanfront properties as vacation homes. They're driving up the taxes even more. I mean, as it stands, Maine has the fourth highest taxes in the country and the U.S.'s fourth highest property taxes. Somebody has to pay for all the welfare in central Maine, right? Regardless, because of the isolation and beauty, tons of celebrities come to Maine. People like John Travolta, Martha Stewart, Daryl Hall, Tucker Carlson, Joan London. Oh my God, Joan London. If you frequent the nicer coastal communities often enough, you might spot other notable people you see in movies and on TV. Perhaps they're looking to escape the craziness. Now don't listen to all the talk about how Maine is either hot or snowing. The state actually has three and a half seasons, winter, mud, summer, and then they get two weeks of fall before it's dead of winter and it's dark at like 2 p.m. The winters aren't always wicked hot in Maine. It's kind of all or nothing. Sometimes they're buried in snow, especially when nor'easters come roaring through. Other years, it's incredibly mild. Winters here are really anybody's guess. And speaking of dark and snowy, there's all kinds of deer and moose and bear and all sorts of critters that you have to avoid on back roads at night. Driving can be a challenge when you share the roads with these animals. There's an average 550 moose caw collisions every year in Maine. And if you've ever driven past one, the car usually loses. There are 70,000 moose in this state. Food wise, it's not all moose. Fine dining in Maine is seafood, fella. Crab shacks with whole belly Ipswich clams, which are coated with crumbs. Of course, the chowder is popular here. Maine chowder used to have cod in it, but cod are harder to catch now that Maine's waters have warmed. Now, the chatta has haddock and potatoes mostly, and mussels, of course. But what's the biggest deal here are all the bugs, aka lobsters, and lobster rolls. They're so popular you can get lobster rolls at McDonald's in Maine. Lobsters are Maine's biggest export, 14% of it in fact. Lobster brought in $368 million last year for Maine. And if you eat a lobster, there's an 80% chance it was harvested in Maine's waters. What's funny about that is that in colonial times, lobster wasn't considered a delicacy. Like, lobster was what they threw to the lower class folks like slaves and prisoners as a way to keep them fed. It was cheap, and at the time, no one wanted them. A lot of people don't ever leave Maine. I mean, why? It has everything you need. Oceans and mountains are a close drive away as are small towns and woods. They smoke and drink. They embrace the snow. They're generally nice and helpful and a little provincial. They're a proud bunch and a different breed. They don't want a big city life. I mean, can you blame them? But a state that's traditionally low in crime and low in opportunity is kind of changing. As opportunities grow, so will the number of outsiders. Can Maine hang on to its culture? Probably. I mean, it's not very diverse now, but every year, 0.5% of it is newcomers. Maine's an extremely clean state, and they like to keep it that way. So if you're from away and are thinking of moving here, great. Don't fuck the place up. Okay, so we did a pretty good job of covering Maine from top to bottom, didn't we? Yeah, we did. And there's all kinds of other stuff we didn't talk about, like the history of Maine. Maine's got a lot of history that we didn't go into, nor did we have time to talk about all the quirky towns and villages everywhere. We could have spent a whole hour talking about those, but we have to go. Our neighbor's working on his car, 
and he needs somebody to hand him Budweiser's all afternoon. Blueberries, potatoes, pine trees. Blueberries, potatoes, pine trees. You'll be bored unless you're into trees. Oh my God, there's just so many trees. Trailer parks that are hidden in the trees. Creepy people that are hiding in the trees. Bears and things that are living in the trees. You'll get lost if you go into the trees. We're a real estate. We're we're not Canada. We're a real estate. We're we're not Canada. We're a real estate. We're we're not Canada. We're a real estate. We're we're not Canada Moose. Put some lobster on that thing. And I'll eat you, 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 I'll eat you. And put some lobster on that thing. And I'll eat you, 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 I'll eat you. We're a real estate, we're we're not Canada, we're a real estate, we're we're not Canada, we're a real estate, we're we're not Canada, we're a real estate, we're we're not Canada. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.